happy Friday, guys. So we've made it one full week in our virtual learning, and I'm so happy that you're on this journey with me. I've seen some pretty amazing stuff from the challenges that I've seen um, submitted to the assignments to people composing music for me so that I can um, play them on my flute and piano. I've loved it. It's been an experience. So today what I thought we'd do is take a take a little bit of a tangent, go away from music and do some very easy crafts. Now these crafts are made out of things you can find at your house. I'm going to show you three different crafts. Um, each one of them is using either things that, li that are lying around your house or things that you would th usually throw away. A lot of people call this recycled art. Um, my partner Eddie likes to call it garbage art. <laughs> So um, the first one is good for kindergarten and first grade, the second one, second and third, and then the last one, fourth or fifth, because it requires a hot glue gun. Um, you can use regular glue, but I find that hot glue guns are better at keeping them together for longer. So let's get started with the kindergarten and first grade one. All right, so let's start with the painting. Um, so the best part about toilet paper rolls is that um, if you paint them right, you shouldn't get a whole lot of paint on you at all. Now, of course, we're talking about kindergarten and first grade, and I have a four-year-old, so I totally get it. But I did this project with my daughter when she was, I think, three or four, maybe five. So um, if she can do it, anyone can do it. So the best way to paint toilet paper rolls is actually to put some fingers on the inside. I usually, uh, my fingers are really big, so I use two and then like make a peak, peace sign so that when I'm painting it, I can just turn it as I go. So that, because if you hold it like this, it's you're gonna get paint on your finger eventually. Um, so first step, make sure there's no toilet paper on it. Obviously, depending on what brand you use, this could be as easy as just peeling it off, or it could be as hard as sitting here and scratching. It just depends on which toilet paper you use. So I'm going to paint my owl um, a very weird color. I'm gonna use turquoise. Um, and then I'm just, I have a big brush, whatever brush you have, use it. If you've got a small brush, it's just going to take you a little bit more time than it does me. So I'm just going to make sure I get a really nice, pretty coat on my toilet paper roll. This toilet paper roll, I chose the demonstration because it's, it's a little bumpy. It, it was a little squished. So you can also use paper towel rolls. You're just going to need to cut them into sections for the owl um, and for the fifth grade project if you're doing that. And there you go, all painted. So then you're just going to set it aside to dry. I um, always have paper plates in my house for whatever reason, birthday parties, that sort of thing. So I always have these lying around. They're great to use. Um, or you could use paper towels. Um, to put them on but it's a great idea or paper it's a great idea to put them on there because it could transfer paint um, any paint will do except for watercolors um, I'm using acrylics but I think tempura paint is fine as well um, just the regular Crayola paint will do just fine so I already have one prepared because I knew that we would be doing this so, so the first thing you're going to do is squish the owl so we're going to take one side and push it in and then we're going to take the other side and push it in as well and you may just need to work it just a little bit just to get it to stay put you can use glue if you want but I find that they stay relatively well as long as you push them a little bit so there's the top of our owl now the next then the next step of this is up to you um, I have paint galore but if you don't have paint the next best thing markers permanent markers or otherwise so I'm going to use a permanent marker for this one, and he's white, but he can be any color that you want. So I'm going to start with big eyes. So you're going to make two big circles on the front, and I'm not all that great at drawing circles, and then little circles for the pupils. Okay, just like that. There's my owl. He's adorable. And then a little triangle for the beak. Just like that and then on the sides you can draw his wings if you like just like that now there are other ways that you can do this you can also paint it or um, we used paper and cut out the eyes and the wings and the wings actually we taped where we glued right here 
and they actually stuck out. So either one of those is fine. I just used marker, but I could also use paint if I wanted to, um, to make it a little bit more dramatic. So if I wanted to take those wings and use my blue, so there he is with his blue wings. And then you can also do other things such as um, if you want to add some color to his beak, you can do that as well. Or add polka dots or stripes or whatever have you. And then you have an owl. And the cutest thing about these is um, they can actually be used as ornaments on a tree um, for Christmas. That's why we made them. We always make um, homemade ornaments every year. And so you can actually stick it on the branch and it'll stay if you have a fake tree like me. Then you can just bend them up, stick them on, and they work like that. So there's our first project, our little owl. Super simple, very easy. So our, our second project is um, a bookmark, and it's actually something that I did with my DIY club in third grade. So my third, some of my third graders actually know how to do this already, but I'm going to walk you through all of the folds that it takes to do it. And there's like a billion videos on YouTube as well. So if you're not getting what I'm laying down, just look up corner bookmark on YouTube and it'll pop up. So we actually did these last night. This is Vinny's. His is a monster. And then all you got to do is just... They fit on the corner, so it's actually a bookmark that you can use. So whatever page you're on, you just move to that, and then you stick your monster on, or your whatever it is, uh, Leah made a giraffe, and then you're good. So I'm going to show you how to make them. All right, so the first thing we need to do is um, make a square, because this is a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the corner, and I'm going to line this edge of the paper with this edge of the paper because that'll show us what a true square is for this okay. and then I'm just gonna make a crease this crease won't do anything other than um, it's actually part of the fold so you're all good on that and then um, you can do two things you can either um, draw a line and then do the next part um, which I prefer to do because I'm really bad at just folding and then open it back up turn it over and then fold until you get to that line and you can either cut it or you can do like I do because my hands shake when I cut and I'm just gonna crease it really hard and then tear it off alright so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bottom corner and fold it up to the top and I already did that because of how it, how it worked out and then we're going to take this corner here and fold it up to this corner and then make a crease. Okay. And then because it's origami, we're going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to fold this corner up to, and I'm using cardstock. So mine's just a little bit harder to fold than everyone else's. You can use regular paper. You don't have to use cardstock just like that. And then we're going to open it back up. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna go open it to here. Sorry, we're gonna open it back up to here, and then we're gonna take one one of the folds down here, make a crease. Okay, and then we're going to take this and fold it up. There are two ways that you can do this. If you want to fold it before you tuck it, you can, but you don't have to. So I'm just gonna tuck it into that pocket and then fold this one back up. You may have to kind of work with it. And then I like to do this because it adds, it makes it a little easier. And then tuck, just like that. You decorate it however you like. All right, and like I said, the last one that we're gonna do um, requires a hot glue gun. Um, you can use other glues, but I find that, like I said earlier, that hot glue is the best for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, toilet paper rolls, and you'll need two to six. It just depends on how many you want. What we're going to make is just a little caddy to go on a desk that can keep pencils, markers, um, scissors, anything like that. I did not paint the inside. If you'd like to paint the inside so you don't see the brown at the top, you're more than welcome to. Other than that, so we're going to take our hot glue gun. And the way that you hot glue them is up to you. You can either glue them in a little square or you can do a line. 
It depends on what your desk looks like. I'm going to do mine in a line just because it looks a little neater and it fits a little better on my daughter's desk. So we're going to take the hot glue and all you're going to do is just run it down the side and then you're going to press two of them together. I like to go on the inside and press, but if you have a really hot glue gun, this one is a low temp, then you're going to want to be careful because you could burn yourself. All right, and then I'm going to do that with each of them. Just like that. Of course, let them dry just a little bit so that you don't accidentally get hot glue on your hands. But then after that, you can fill them with all sorts of neat stuff that you have lying around whatever it may be paint brushes we have lots of pencils markers that sort of thing and just kind of makes your desk a little bit more um organized. so i know this isn't music but um, i am an avid do-it-yourself diyer and i just wanted to take friday to allow yourself to have some fun so some of these projects um, you need a parent for but a lot of them as long as you're doing them safely you can do on your own just make sure that before you start anything you let your parents know that you're doing it um, because arts and crafts can get messy and you don't want to have a mess on your hands and your parents get mad at me <laughs> okay all right guys i hope you have a wonderful weekend and i'll see you next week bye